no, 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 don't do this to me. These guys been falling apart on me lately. Okay, we can fix this. We better or the boss will kill us all. Load up file MRER07. Don't look at me, just shut up and do it. all the time, why did I never actually end up reviewing Minority Report Everybody Runs, when in one of my very first videos years and years ago, I basically guaranteed that I was going to review it. Well, I did review it, but something went wrong with my video capture device, and all of the footage that I'd recorded turned out to be graphically corrupted and it was completely useless. So that's why the review never got published, because... It meant I would have had to go back to the very beginning and play the entire game from beginning to end, and fuck that. I realize that I've developed a really bad habit of leaving things unfinished. I can't keep just giving up on things. I can't let these movies and games keep beating me like they've been beating me lately, like Red Brown and Final Fantasy. I mean, what good am I to you? Why would you watch if I just walk out on things like I have been lately? It doesn't make any sense. I need to nut up. I need to start winning again. And I gotta start by beating this game once and for all, something I never finished and I never had the balls to do until now. Because this game's got an ass kicking five years overdue and God damn it, we're gonna do it right now. But hey, this'll blow your mind. I think the story's pretty good. Really, it basically follows the plot of the movie and I really liked the movie. I mean, yeah, the game dumbs it down a lot and pads it out like crazy with many bosses and levels of generic brawling. But, you know, they adapted a Philip K. Dick story into a movie, and adapted the movie into a beat-em-up video game, so what do you want? And the last time they tried this, we got Total Recall, so I'll give the story a pass. In case you don't remember, the movie's about future cop John Anderton, who works in an experimental unit called Pre-Crime, a new system that allows the police to predict and prevent murders just before they happen. How? Well, it's all thanks to three people known as the Precogs. Sort of unfortunate kids, really. Since it's the future, there's all sorts of new complex drugs that do really weird things to brain chemistry. And the precogs were born with mutations because of their junky parents. It's a crack, baby, fool! Sort of. The mind-altering drugs have altered their minds permanently so that together they can see the future and infallibly predict the time and place of every murder that's going to happen. I wonder how the police are getting away with exploiting these poor kids like this, basically working them around the clock, watching grisly murders, and floating around in a giant bowl of human cereal. Or maybe that's the point, it's some kind of commentary on the government, I don't know. Anyway, the precogs can see two kinds of murders, premeditated and the more spontaneous kind. When that happens, a signal gets sent upstairs to a wood carving machine. The machine gets two blocks of wood, turns the wood into a pair of balls. If it's second degree murder, it paints the balls red. On one ball, it engraves the names of the victims, and on the other ball, it engraves the name of the murderer. And then it rolls the balls down a hamster maze. A very long hamster maze, apparently. And then we page Tom Cruise, who drives to the office and takes his sweet-ass time walking all the way to the fifth goddamn floor and says hello to everyone on the way. Hey, you want to stop for coffee on the way, John? Because you can get me some while you're at it. I guess there isn't a rush, because his balls are still dropping. So Tom walks in and grabs his balls and inspects them carefully, because early detection of problems with your balls is important. There really isn't a more efficient way of handling this. You got two people over there about to be impaled with scissors. You got three autistic kids being drowned in milk in the next room with no lifeguard on duty. And the best system of evidence documentation is scratching balls. How about a laser printer? How about that? And check it out! These fit in a drawer! 
I mean, the balls even look alike. What happens if you drop them and get them mixed up? You could shoot the wrong guy. Anyway, if it's a premeditated murder, the balls are brown. But the thing is, the precogs can detect those days in advance, so they don't even happen anymore because they're so easy to stop. But let's not kid ourselves. We are arresting individuals who have broken no law. But they will. The commission of the crime itself is absolute metaphysics. The precogs see the future, and they're never wrong. Then why can't they see rapes? Oh, no, they can do that, too. In that case, we go out, we prevent the guy from having sex, and the guy gets blue balls. <laughs> they get are the red balls because in those cases they only get a few minutes advance warning which is why i wonder why he's not hauling some ass already suspect runs a large catering facility which is where the murder goes down in 37 seconds barry what's our eta 30 seconds chief let's go save this guy's future Wait, the game. I sense the future. It's it's gonna suck nuts. Yeah, I know. This guy in this game looks nothing like Tom Cruise in this movie. He looks more like this guy who was M. Bison in this piece of shit. And that pisses me off because this guy is the real M. Bison in this piece of shit. And I liked this piece of shit. Of course! Anyway, this Anderton is voiced by Clancy Brown, which is also weird because he voices Lex Luthor. And now he's on his way to stop this guy from being killed by Mean Gene Okerlund? Your beard is a little sideways too, but I don't want to get into that. That's I'm not right. going to take personal pot shots at you or anybody else. That's not my nature. Get in line, everybody. I'm a little down. better guy than that. I don't mind telling you. I'm a bigger man. Gentlemen, as you know, the ultimate warrior. Fuck it. Anderton's a lucky guy too, when you think about it. It's hard to make it in showbiz, and not many people manage to break through the glass ceiling. Serena, freeze! Damn it, he's getting away. An awful lot of goons around here willing to just throw their lives away trying to kill this cop. How many of you like your boss enough that you'd just be willing to pick up a rolling pin and go after a policeman like a berserker if he just ran past yelling, GET HIM! Come to think of it, if these guys are trying to kill Anderton, how come the psychics didn't predict that too? Shit, everyone's trying to kill Anderton in this fucking building. Where are the other cops playing with their balls? Oh! Oh no, I... Oh my god! I didn't add that scream! What the hell is happening here? You're not John Anderton, you're Dirty Harry! You're a bad cop on the loose! Oh, fuck! No, wait, please! I give up! No, no, I'm sorry! I was just doing all my best! Ah! Holy shit, he just threw that dude onto a bunch of deep fryers and burned him alive! Medic! John Anderton's gone off the fucking deep end, man! I didn't kill anybody! I just sent my loyal army of caterers to kill you for me! Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. Considering you just sent about 20 guys to attack me who were all in better shape than you, and who now all need several major spinal surgeries, this may not have been your wisest course of action. You are under arrest for the future murder of Joe Gustafson. <gasps> Barry, give the man his hat. It just doesn't make sense. No! Now, the central question of Minority Report, aside from why isn't Anderton under suspension and criminal investigation for setting a man on fire, is how you can imprison someone for murder, although he didn't actually commit murder. Although he was totally going to, and he sent an entire army of goons to kill you before attempting to kill you himself. But he didn't technically murder anyone, although he totally would have if you hadn't stopped him. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks and Donald Dubin. It was take place today, April 22nd, at 0800 hours and 4 minutes. No, I didn't do anything. I mean, if you're gonna lock me up for murder, let me kill the guy first! Come on! Well, the whole question about whether or not the future is said is what the FBI is curious about, too. And that's why they sent Angry Joe? I have a letter from the Attorney General granting me full access to pre-crime. Joe, dude, what happened? Wow, in the future, Joe totally sells out and becomes a G-man. Wait, who's that guy on the left? Random task. Korean ex-wrestler, evil handyman extraordinaire. Angry Joe has doubts that you can just assume because you can see a murder in the future that it's automatically gonna happen no matter what. She's concerned about your little operation going national without checking for possible flaws. There are no flaws, Agent Whitworth. 
We haven't had a murder in six years. <laughs> yeah, what flaws? Locking people up without any sort of trial because some rambling crack baby psychics told you to. Supreme Court's gonna love it. I mean, okay, I grant you they're absolutely correct, but good luck arguing predeterminism in front of an appeals court. You're fucked. Why'd you catch that? Because it was gonna fall. You're certain? Yeah, but it didn't fall. You caught it. The fact that you prevent it from happening doesn't change the fact that it was going to happen. You'd better take a look at this. Excuse me. I have a job to do. Anyway, more balls drop, so Anderton heads back out, this time with Angry Joe sending his guys as observers. This is my operation. You answer to me. Clear? Crystal. Are we clear? Crystal. This is where you learn to hate the camera. This should be a simple test of any game's controls, especially if the developers know their camera system sucks. And let's be honest here, they know. Walking in a straight line. That's it. I should be able to- FUCK! I should be able to just walk in a straight line across this pipe. Something anyone in the real world could do in seconds, right? A simple physical- FUCK! This isn't that fucking hard, you know? It's only made difficult here because the controls suck ass. I can't even believe how many years to my life bad camera controls are- Oh, fuck your mother! Fuck you! I swear to God I'm gonna find whoever made this game and piss all over your fucking pillows! It's like all it takes to beat John Anderton's super cop is to build a bridge two feet wide. Fuck you! The only way to get across is to, like, literally crawl inch by inch until you make it. Then there's the guns, which are useless. Well, almost useless. I say almost because they're actually less effective than hand-to-hand -hand combat most of the time. But then there are really weird, unexpected times when the useless guns are suddenly the only ways you can win. Every other time, they barely do anything but knock off just a little bit of the guy's health, so you'll end up burning through all of your ammo, knocking out just one guy, no matter what the gun is, like the riot gun or the machine gun. And the machine gun's the worst one of all because it leaves you standing perfectly still the entire time while everyone else surrounds you. There's a grenade launcher too, but you'll only end up blowing your own balls off, guaranteed. Can you tell this was just around the time ragdoll physics was invented? Yeah, we couldn't get enough of it. The problem is, even though everyone has the same sucky guns, there's a zillion of them and one of you. And they're all really good shots, so the damage piles up fast, especially if you're standing still or you get ragdolled. Oh, but don't worry, the security robots are easily beaten to death with hand-to-hand -hand combat, just like the human opponents. You may be a gigantic machine of mass destruction, but I am a man! Oh, son of a bitch, that hurt! This is what really happens when you try to punch a robot. Fuck you, Snow. Freeze! There's no way out of here. There's always a way out, John. Here, catch! Damn, if only we had some sort of projectile weapon with which to incapacitate her. Well, I guess we found a flaw in the pre-crime thing. She's good. Back at the ranch, you guessed it, the precogs finger Anderton to commit the next murder. Too bad Barry's in the room at the time, or he could have tucked his balls back in, nobody would have known. John? What? Chief, you and me go way back. I'll lock down the ready room and buy you some time. Look, try to get home. I'll upload these reports to you there, and maybe we can make some sense of this mess, but just go now! We'd never think to look at you at your own place, now go! This is a red ball alert. No, you want to talk a red ball alert, just talk to this guy. Ouch. So just like OJ, when you're wanted for murder, everybody runs. So that's exactly what I do. I meet up a couple of guys along the way and run for the front door. But door's locked. Access to none. I've got an override card upstairs in the ready room. I have to get that if I'm gonna open these doors. What? Fuck you! I can't even... The objective of the level... The alarm goes off, so the guy locks down the briefing room so you can escape out the front door. Which is locked! And the key is in the briefing room! Kiss my ass! So now you have to run all the way back up there, and now every cop and his brother's in your way! Well, good thing Barry bought you all that extra time, then, jackass! Or do I have to now unlock down the briefing room to get the key to the front door and- OH MY GOD! Oh, holy shit, did you just see that? He fell like 40 feet through, I don't know how much fucking plate glass. That guy's fucking dead! Oh, God! He might not be dead! You know nobody really dies in a video game like this. Anderton's not gonna kill anybody. Wait, Anderton, what are you doing? No, not again! Oh!
Anderton, man, why did you do that? You work with that guy. Ah! Look, it's a classic movie trope. People go through glass all the time in movies, and holy shit, God, no! It's not even safety glass. It's breaking into 12 foot long fucking spears. Oh, God! Ow! Would you stop it? They can't possibly be dead because A, the precogs would have predicted it, and B, it totally defeats the purpose of a story about proving you're innocent of a murder by publicly murdering several people by throwing them off an impossibly high skyscraper like he's just about to do. No! No! What are you doing? No! Oh my god, you killed him! Oh god! He was a cop! You just threw a cop off a building the first murder in six years? No, no, Anderton, not him too. Please, the guy has kids. Oh, for God's sake. Oh. John, I'm gonna have to take you in. You don't understand, Whitworth. I'm not gonna kill anyone. You have got to be kidding me. Yeah, the precogs didn't see this shit coming, did they? You'd think with this much death on the horizon, their fucking heads would explode. At first I thought this was some kind of test, like there's a bad ending for taking the easy way out and killing people. But nope, everything works out great, so feel free, killing spree! I believe I can fly. Woo. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. I see me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. I can fly. I believe I can fly. I can fly. I believe I can fly. I can fly. Hey, if I just spread my wings, I can fly. I can fly. can see my problem, right? I mean, clearly they saw the movie, because otherwise they got the plot correct. I, just, I don't know what happened. Did the project leader, the director, see Clancy Brown in the recording booth and go, you know what? Fuck it. You know, we got Clancy Brown. This isn't going to be Minority Report with John Anderton. This is going to be Minority Report with the fucking Kurgan. There can be only one. Ah, what a stench. Yep. Sewer level, this was inevitable, and they suck too. Why? No plate glass in sewers. I mean, what's the point? Man, I never knew city sanitation workers were so militant about their jobs. They'll kick your ass. One time my cousin Walter got this cat stuck in his ass. True story. They've locked down the station. Let me guess which one of these guys has the key. A shoe! Whoa, no he won't! Jesus Christ, this guy fucking power slams you like he's Jax! He really is a Korean wrestler. He's breaking my back and making me hamble. And great, he's got a pistol-sized cluster missile launcher. Where did the feds get these wonderful toys? The best way to beat him is to tag him with the gun, which sends him flying, and then just run up and savage him in the corner while he's stunned. I love how that's how the noble hero should act, to mercilessly shoot downed opponents like a coward. It's strange how the bosses are the only time the guns are of any use. You'd think it would be the other way around. Oh fuck, except for this one. It's like the game knows this and screws you over by not letting you use guns in this fight with the most bullshit explanation possible. Defeat Agent Mosley again. This time, make a point and do it with your bare hands. Make a point? The hell are you talking? The fuck you make a point? Who cares? I've left a trail of corpses 60 cops long, but this time I'm gonna send a message and really beat some respect into this guy. Sure, blow me. Pearl sticks? You'd think after all the cops I've killed, they'd break out the real guns at this point. 
Hey, it is in the movie. Soon every cop will have a hurl stick. Half the cops in this game have them. You can even buy a puke bomb and hurl it at people to make them hurl. Dude, they all hurled simultaneously. Finally, you discover the guy who set you up, a dude named Verhagen who framed you for murder. Framed you for murder. To get you removed from pre-crime so he could take it over for profit? I don't know, that's what he says. Anyway, he sends in his fashion model slash hit woman from Johnny Mnemonic to have you killed. Hello, precogs? You just sitting this one out? This is it! Final boss fight! Come at me, brah! I've been killing people all day, don't think I won't hit a- Hey! No cog punching! Oh, damn it! Why do you hate my balls? Oh, Johnny Cage, right? Oh my god, you're reminding me of my last girlfriend. Not sure about the platform. Hail! Ah! Uh, you know, at least now I don't feel bad about shooting an unarmed woman in the face with a rocket launcher. Bye! Oh, and then throwing her broken ass down an 80-foot tube like she's the fucking emperor! Ah! Looks like you're the one who got the shaft. Ah! Oh, my eye! Wait, John! We can fix this! No, you can't! Give the lady her hat. Don't kill me. I can give you money. I don't want money. I just want an ice pack. My nuts have swollen to the size of goddamn watermelons. And so the game ends with Anderton's name cleared. Somehow. Pre-crime continues despite failing to predict the 70-plus murders at Anderton's hands, and Verhagen is brought to justice, trapped for the rest of his life in a computer prison of the mind. Which reminds me of a really interesting theory some fans had about the movie. In fact, it's so brilliant I really doubt the writer was trying to be that subtle. It's just that the fans interpreted it in a really mind-blowing way. If you remember in the movie, it's pretty standard fare. Everything's happy. Tom Cruise finds the killer, clears his name, same deal. It, everything's hunky-dory. In fact, everything's way too hunky-dory when you think about it. This ending is absolutely storybook. In fact, it looks like it's out of a storybook. It looks like it's a Thomas Kincaid painting. I mean, Anderton and the Precogs go off and live in a log cabin in the woods somewhere and celebrate Christmas? The end? Even Captain Picard's idea of paradise wasn't this cheesy when he got sucked into the Nexus. So what's my point? Well, earlier in the movie, Anderton actually gets arrested by free crime and put into that exact same mental suspended animation prison along with all the other prisoners that he's arrested. And we're told that while in that coma, your mind does really funny things to you in there, almost like a dream state. It's actually kind of a rush. They say you have visions, that your life flashes before your eyes. That all your dreams come true. So how unlikely is it that all of a sudden his ex-wife single-handedly breaks him out of prison, which is guarded by one guy and escape raising no alarms, and even though pre-crime is demonstrated to be fallible, causing hundreds of murder convictions to be overturned, and Whitworth is dead, but whatever. We've got hot cocoa and everything's gonna be okay, cause I'm okay. And you know what? I do feel a whole hell of a lot better, cause I could be doing a whole hell of a lot worse. I got a shitty game and I'm throwing people through plate glass windows. I don't have to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid.